In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can append to a Python list. Let's consider this computer program and look at the first line of code. If we consider what this is doing, it's going to create an instance of the list class. And this instance is going to be holding the names of courses that appear within an educational program. And we can see that what we will have here is a name that's going to be bound to that instance of the list class. In other words, bound to an object. And that object is going to have three elements and these elements are going to have the values analysis, design and coding respectively. And if we consider diagrammatically what this line will give us, it'll give us this here. And you can see we have a schematic representation of a list that contains analysis, design and coding. And we can see here that the index goes from 0 through to 2 and that the name of the list is subjects underscore taught and what we're really saying here is that this is an instance of the list class i.e an object and this is the name bound to that object now if we consider this line it's simply going to print out this literal string and the list what we're going to see output is the following there's the literal string that's been output and this is the list showing us the analysis design and coding as it appeared in the program here this is the next line of the program to execute and here you can see we have an input statement and this is going to output this string here please enter name of the new subject we can see that this string appears here and what is happening now the program is waiting for the user to enter a new subject to be added to the list so I'm going to enter discrete maths and if you're American that would be discrete math but here I've typed in discrete maths and to ensure that I want the code to take in a string at this point you'll notice that I'm converting what is input here to a string now it would be a string in any case I just like to make sure that my code informs whoever reads it that I am intending for a string to be input here that's why I would always use this now what inputted which is the discrete maths is assigned to this variable here new underscore subject now of course new underscore subject will be the name that's bound to the instance of the string class where that instance holds discrete maths but you can go with the fact that new underscore subject is a variable that stores discrete maths that's the way in which you would normally talk about it but of course under the bonnet of Python we have to remember that everything is an object let's now consider this line which is a message it is a message to the object to which this name is bound and the method within that object that's going to be invoked is this one here the append method and the append method will take with it this parameter new underscore subject which we know is storing discrete maths so this message here is responsible for sending a message to this instance of the list class and diagrammatically we can show that with this arrow representing the message and you can see that we are going to be asking to invoke the append method and we're passing in new underscore subject which is the name that's bound to the string object that contains discrete maths now remember this append method will have been declared in the list class and this is an instance of the list class so what the message will do in this case it'll add to the end of this list what's stored in new underscore subject which we know to be the discrete maths and diagrammatically we can show that as follows if you now look at the list you can see it has four elements it still has the same name and you can see that the index now goes from zero all the way up to three and what this message has done it is added to the end of the list the discrete math string and adding to the end of a list as shown here is what we describe as appending when you append you add to the end now there are other ways of adding things to lists but we'll look at that in other videos but here you can see that the message was responsible for adding another element to the list and making that element's value discrete maths now it is worth pointing out again the very fact that i am able to append to the end of the list reminds us that a list is mutable it can be altered at runtime as you can see here 
The next program statement to execute is this one. And if we look to the runtime and see what this was responsible for outputting, we will see that it gives us this. We can see that this literal string is placed here, and this is responsible for outputting the list. And if you look at the list, you can see it's different to this one, because here we've got the discrete math at the end of the list, because, of course, this line of the code appended it to the end of the list. Put in simple terms, we can see that this program statement appended to the end of this list the content of this variable. Now I've talked about classes and objects, the reason being when you look at this program statement and you see this dot, it's dot notation which tells us that in the context of this program, this is a message. And of course messages belong to the object oriented programming paradigm. So whereas we can simply say, well, what we're doing, we're adding this to the end of a list. It's a string to be added at the end of a list that in this case contains all strings. That's fine. But I think it's important that you get this feel for when you're dealing with Python, we're always dealing with classes and objects when we're working in the object oriented programming paradigm. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?